everybody, and welcome back to The Tea with Crema. My name's Chris, I'll be one of your hosts, and I'm joined by my best friend, Emma. Hey, y'all. Today, we have a re-recording, a re-attempt, a reimagining of a previous <laughs> episode. Um, about a year or so ago, we tried a romance-based episode for me. And uh, I really messed it up. I really botched it. I just uh, kind of coasted through, did not really invest in it, just kind did of... Did not answer any questions, just... He just... He showed up, he, but he did not understand the assignment, as the young kids like to say. <laughs> at all. And so, in an attempt to, you know, be aligned also with what I said on my vision board, and just, you know, constant personal growth... We're going to try again, but a little more invested in the episode. And <laughs> we're really feeling the inspiration, you know, because season two of Love is Blind ha- has been coming out. And Em and I have really been catching up on our episodes. So that's where this episode's really taking its inspiration. So yes. I'm hopeful. I'm a little bit more hopeful on this one. You know, I think I might understand the assignment a little better. So... We go see. I think it'll work out. I hope so. <laughs> it'll be our Chris, you know, dear future partner 2.0. That's what we're hoping for. But like this time, like actually actual question. <laughs> <laughs> so we have different questions. It's a whole reimagined episode, but it'll, we go see what happens. Before we begin, you know, we have our little drink check at the start. So Emma, what tea did you bring today? I am drinking, it is called Lemon Zinger. It's caffeine free. <gasps> And it's made by Celestial Seasonings. Um, mm-hmm. I got it, I think, over Christmas break. I got it, and it came in, like, a box. But it was interesting because they're not individual tea bags. They're packs. So there's no mm-hmm. there's no string. So I'm not sure if I'm supposed to still steep and then take out or if I just leave it in. So far, I've left it in, and it's been about 20 minutes, and it tastes fine still. I don't know if that's right, though. I personally have always left it in my Celestial Seasonings. and. Ah. They they do their packaging really different from a lot of other tea places. So, like, they do get rid of the, the string and the tag, and it's just the one package. And then also in the bigger packs, they're, like, sealed in a wax so that the freshness stays, as opposed to the individually wrapped aluminum packs. Oh. And, yeah, it's a... They're supposed... They say that it's a more eco-friendly, materials-friendly approach to their tea, And so, like, the pack that you have, I think, probably came in, like, one of the multi-flavored packs. Yeah, so there's, like, three within mm -hmm. a pack. Yeah, so that's why yours is, like, sort of wrapped in the aluminum. But if you get, like, a full case of it, it just comes in a, like, it's a box and then the wax-sealed bag to keep the freshness of all the bags. Yeah, because I, like, put it in a... So I've had, like, multiple of these, so I just put them... As I open them, I put them into a Ziploc bag, and they all kind of, like, stay together, which I don't know if that's proper or not, but it's just because it's, like, open at the top, and there's no way for me to reseal it. But, yeah, it's interesting, though. I like it so far. I really like the the flavor of it. It's not, like, super heavy. It's very lemon-forward, so I like it. Yeah. How are you? What are you drinking today? Well, today, in honor of our romance based episode Mm -hmm. the love is blind blind is love is blind (laughs) blind is love (laughs) blind love (laughs) oh yoda moment i have a um it's called a bianca alla rosa tea it's from t fiori and it's a white rose tea with bai mudan white tea and rose petals yum Mm-hmm. So it's just a really light, refreshing tea. And, you know, it's because it's that white tea, it's just really light, kind of fragrant, uh, easy to drink. So I like it so far. Is it caffeine free or is there caffeine in there? It's low caffeine. Hmm. So it's a little bit, but not too much. It's hard to find. I guess like most caffeine free teas are like fruit based. Mm, makes sense. Yeah, so white, green, and black teas all tend to have caffeine in them. Oh, and oolong teas have caffeine in them. So just a quick little tea breakdown. Yum. Okay, so are you ready to jump into it? 
Yes. And just for some background, uh, Emma wrote all these questions and I have not seen them because that's kind of the whole, obviously this isn't like an actual me dating someone right now episode. It's a asking the questions related to dating type episode. And yes. in true love is blind fashion, I don't, I haven't seen the questions. I don't know what they are. Um, so we're just going to fly by the seat of our pants on this one. And that's okay. So again, like what Chris had said, inspiration wise, he texts me yesterday and goes, have you seen the new season of love is blind? And I'm like, yeah, I wasn't going, I wasn't planning on watching it because the first season I was like, it was too much. I, you know, whatever. But then I decided to start watching it. Now I'm currently on episode three and Chris is currently on episode eight as of recording time. And so as I was watching it and in those first couple of episodes is when they're in the pods, um, pre-engagement, you know, just getting to know each other. I was like, oh, this would be like the perfect way for us to kind of like prep Chris for dating. (laughs) And so that's kind of where the inspiration came from is like asking questions on Love is Blind. If you're not familiar with the show, uh, there's 15 couples, 15 men and 15 women are put into these mysterious pods. They can't see each other and all they have to go off of is the other person's voice. You don't know anything about what they look like. You don't know anything about their ethnic background. You don't know, um, you know, X, Y, Z. So all you know is their voice. And so taking that into consideration, I was wanting, I was wondering, you know, how Chris would be in this type of situation. Like, would he be able to go from zero to four weeks married? I don't know. So that's what we're going to do. We're trying to prepare Chris for love is blind dating. He's, you know, yeah. So let's just jump into it. Okay. So first question out of the way, would you ever be open to being on a dating show? Like bachelor-esque, love is blind type thing? I think so. I mean, if for nothing else than the experience, but I mean, also who knows where true love is. It could be on a show. That could be it. That's fine. That's true. Also, I'm down for like a scripted romance for the coin. <laughs> for the coin. Yes. I will go and get that sponsorship for the coin. Like we don't have to stay together. This can be a PR relationship. Like I'm fine. You. We can make this work. <laughs> like I'm not stressed. We got to do what we got to do. Uh, so yeah, I definitely, I could do a show. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I've always wanted to be on a show. Yeah. They're not competitive. I guess they are. Dating shows are kind of like a competition. And I think it's like, well, it depends, right? Because if you were on like something like The Bachelor, you would be competing with X amount of contestants for this one person's love, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I even can- like in Love is Blind, you're, it's a little bit of a competition of some sort. That's true. Yeah, you're right. So are, you have- there's only like a finite number of people on either side, and you just kind of want to put your best foot forward so that like you're finding someone. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so it's also been about a year since Dear Future Partner, which was our episode... Ooh, our last episode in like February. So it's been exactly a year. Um, let's update the listeners on your dating life since then. Has there been any movement? Have you made more of a conscious effort to start dating? Or is it kind of like in the same place as we were last year? No, I think I made a consci- conscious effort to not date actually after that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nope, I... I'm not ready for this. So I, <laughs> I intentionally stopped after that episode. Um, but I will, I have made an effort to try back in this year, at least to try dating to see what it's like. I can't rule it out as an experience. It might be very rewarding. I don't know. I guess also just because I haven't necessarily sold myself on the idea of like marrying someone and being with them for the rest of my life, just because of a lot of the institutions around marriage and it being inherently like religious at its core and also Mm. really heteronormative. And so as I've gotten older, I'm also kind of coming to like, is like marriage really the, like the thing that I'm looking for in my lifelong human interaction. So there's that. It's hard to be like, yes, I want to date while also questioning what I would want the core outcome to be. And I don't necessarily want to have those questions while trying to also be with another person who could very well have a very set idea of like, I want to do these exact things in relation to dating. And Mm. 
I mean, it's cool if you got your life figured out in that way, but not all of us do. So I think I'm getting closer to it, but also part of like, you can theorize about something all day long and then actually do it. And then you're like, oh, that is not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah. That's I my update. That that, I think I love that update. I think that that's so valid too, right? It's because like on the, on the show, we see these people who come in and one of the partners has a very you know, strong idea of what they wanted a partner. And some of them are kind of like, eh, I'm kind of shopping around. Like, I don't know what works or doesn't work. Or, you know, like some of them are products of divorce. And so they kind of have this view on dating and love. And I think that that's always interesting how that plays out. Okay. So let's pretend you're on Love is Blind. You walk into the pod and you introduce yourself. You're like, hey, my name is Chris. What is your elevator speech when they tell you, tell me about yourself, Chris? Like my little intro, my go-to? Yeah, your go-to. Like, what if you're like, you know, because I feel like that's kind of the first question that everyone asks is like, tell me about yourself. That's, oof, that's fine. Uh, I think I would not want to lead with my work. I know that much. Mm, and it's not like okay. a shame of work. It's just that like, I don't know. I just don't want that to be like my main forming identity. Mm. Okay. I don't want people to be like, this is this person, and he likes work. Because really, I don't. <laughs> if I could if I could not work and still make money, I would. Um, so I guess it would have to be, I would try to leave with something that I am more passionate about. So things that I like to do, like cooking and trying new things. And I don't know, I'm, I'm still convinced that I'm funny. I say you're funny too. I think you're a very specific brand of funny, but yeah, and it's not like stand-up comedy funny, but like I'm comedic, goofy, <laughs> fun-loving. You know, there you go. That's what I want to hear. These are the those types are of the things. things. That's the elevator speech I'm looking for. I'm trying to pull that out of you. You know, you like know, adventurous that's the stuff. I'll yeah. I mean yeah. I'll try anything at least one time. Yeah. I don't know if I would say like. Truly, truly, like, I don't know, when I guess, when I hear adventurous, I'm hearing someone who's, like, out every weekend doing something. Oh. And I'm very much, like, I could sit at the, on the couch and just watch a TV show this weekend. Like, that's, that's <laughs> fine with me. We we do not actually have to go climb a mountain, like, this weekend. We, <laughs> we can, could, like, plan for the mountain in a couple next, months. Next, <laughs> next month, like, two months from now, like... It doesn't have to be this weekend. When I said I wanted to hike a mountain, I did not mean today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now that you've got your elevator speech out of the way, I feel like as we were watching the episodes, I was definitely like live, not, what is that called? Like I was like live texting you like, oh my God, this person is trash. Like first thing off the bat, like the first thing that came out of their mouth, I was like, no, that would be a, like, I would not talk to that person again. So after you find out this person's name in the other side of the pod, what is the first question you ask that lets you know if they're worth continuing to talk to? So it sounds essentially like looking for those early on deal breakers. Or like even just like the weeding out questions, right? So yeah, even like early on deal breakers, maybe there's like certain conversations that you need to have to, you know? I mean, so from things that I've seen like on actual like love is blind, mm. I think... I think some big ones are like some long-term goals, especially relating to, I think the big ones that I've seen that have really put strain on relationships are kids. Mm -hmm. So that's like massive mm -hmm. uh, financial goals, career goals. Um, and I would say just like, even like the social or just like, those personal goals, you know, like home ownership versus RV versus alternative lifestyle, you know, those types of things. And it's not to, I wouldn't even say I would be going through it to label someone as like good or bad as much as maybe just like good or bad fit for me. Yeah. Compatibility. Because mm -hmm. if someone's like, Ooh, I want all the kids. This is almost assuredly not going to work out. I'm still at best on the fence. <laughs> leaning more onto like, ah, 
I don't think I want them. So, like, mm. to know that someone is very firmly in the I want kids camp. And need kids, yeah. Need kids camp. I I don't think that that would be... I'm not opposed to them right now, but I definitely do not need to be with someone who's, like, all the kids, all the time. Like, I just... It's not the mindset that I want to have going into children is, eh, do I? You can't be, can't be half cold on them <laughs> or <laughs> lukewarm on them. <laughs> you know, that's just, uh, I wouldn't even describe myself as like lukewarm. I, the glass is like, it's well below half full. Like it's empty. <laughs> the water is evaporating out of my like, will I have kids glass? Like it's, we've went below the halfway mark. It's definitely mostly empty now. Um, <laughs> so to know that there's someone that's just like, I want the kids. I I just don't think we would have long-term compatibility. Um, and then I think I want to have a home. Like right now, my vision for a home would be somewhere out side of the city with land and space Mm. and so that would be a big i just don't know if i could see myself like in a city forever there's nothing wrong with the city there's lots of stuff to do in a city and i think you know while i'm young it's nice and it's convenient but like long term me definitely wants to just be out in the world on my farm so i can leave it if i need to but i feel comfortable out there too These are, like, really good first question and, like, first questions. In my head, I was thinking, like, if I were on a show like this, my first question would be, like, what are your thoughts on the school-to-prison pipeline? (laughs) What are your, what are your, you know, feelings around police brutality? You know, like, these are the questions that I feel like I would need to know immediately. Like, am I, are we going to keep this? I could see, I could see as a, like, how those would be disqualifying factors i think i just consider from like a practical compatible like a practical sense mm. so like are we those gonna are actually the- be able to live together <laughs> like do we have anything in common that would allow this to sustain a relationship like at a core level because yes we could agree on all of the like social justice ideas and concepts and things of that nature and then realize that like oh you want six kids in a condo downtown for the rest of your life. Like that's your ideal goal. And I don't know if that would be me Mm. with like the six kids and the four dogs and the downtown or even like suburb. I think I could do okay in a suburb. I just (laughs) would not be your first option. I guess like my first option. I mean, I've been out of the dating game for, you know, almost 12 years now. So I don't know what these conversations look like. Also, we started dating when we were in high school. So those conversations look very different then than it did now. You know, it would now as a, you know, almost 30 year old. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. So then moving into, because there were definitely, and I feel like this is almost like a Love is Blind review <laughs> episode as well. There were some red flags immediately in those first episodes. You know, there was that one girl who was just like, everyone loves me. Like, oh my gosh, I feel like all the guys want to talk to me. Like, girl, what? No one wanted to talk to you. Everyone thought you were annoying. And then there was a, and then there was Sheik who was like, are you going to be light enough for me to carry <laughs> at a festival? When he said that, I was like, no, automatic red flag done. I'm out of here. Okay. Talking about someone who is, misunderstood the assignment. That was, <laughs> like, he was he was not even like trying to be love is blind. He was trying to see. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to see you very clearly ahead of time. <laughs> um, okay, so what are the red flag behaviors and questions that another person might ask you that would take them off of your like preferred list of partners? Red flags. Um I think displays of overly possessive behaviors. Mm. I am not sure that I am someone who likes the idea of like the possession part of a relationship. Like you are mine. You know what I mean? Like I get some people think it's really cutesy. Like, Ooh, be mine. I'm his, I'm yours. Like, I just, I'm not sure I feel about the concept of like, you are mine, you know? Um, And I definitely think that people can sometimes take that possession to, like, very unhealthy extremes. Where are you? Who are you with? What are y'all doing? Like, I I need some autonomy as a 
person who had autonomy before you were ever in my life. Mm -hmm. And I still retain that autonomy. Um, So people who are not about the autonomous life, I get communication, but we don't like everything together. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we did not come into this with the same friends and peer group. We're not now like the one person. Mm. No one sewed us together. We are not hive mind. (laughs) You know? So I think those overly possessive things. I also am not sure that I'm in a space to like nurture someone through a seemingly overwhelming amount of like insecurities. Mm. Because again, I think that goes into that possessiveness. Like you have to be secure enough in like yourself to where we can develop trust. Yeah. To where you don't feel like you have to ask me where I am all of the time because you think that I'm doing something out of character or out of sorts or not in alignment with what we agreed upon in this relationship. So I think someone that I'm always having to like reassure. Mm. Cause I don't, I, I don't think I need all that much reassurance. So having to provide it to someone all the time would be difficult. I think I could be wrong, but I would imagine it would be difficult. What we are looking for is healed humans, humans who have, you know, are obviously most, you know, there's some insecurities you may have, but it's not like, I don't have to constantly tell you how much I love you for mm-hmm. you to feel secure in this relationship. And I, I don't even want to say healed humans, because that implies that you, that's a, like a certain level of privilege. Like Ooh, you've had access yes. to things to be yes. able to heal. Um but what I will say is, like, I'm not the one who's going to be healing you. Oh, I was going to say, but are you the healer then in that case? In, I'm in not. Because, like, how? Like, how? How would I be? How would I be the one? Like, I don't. Yeah. Also, anytime I see those, like, rom-coms where, like, the healer gets left, I just, I'm like, mm-mm, no, you thought you were leaving who? I didn't put all <laughs> this effort into into you, into making you better for you to do what? <laughs> leave me <laughs> <laughs> you thought <laughs> like that's what i don't that's what i do not understand you know like when when a lot of times in these like rom-coms right you see these women who help these men become better men and then they'd go on and take those skills to another woman like there is nothing there is nothing that would scorn me more than my healed man moving on to someone else <laughs> with his healing okay like i did not heal you <laughs> for you to leave me <laughs> Like, mm-mm. now, within the terms of relationship, you might seek that healing elsewhere. And I will certainly encourage you to find that healing elsewhere. Mm. But A, I am not qualified in any way to heal anyone. Back. I still feel as though I would classify myself as a unhealed human. <laughs> How am I going to be out here blind leading the blind? Like, But love is blind, is it not? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we don't find out. Is healing blind as well? Just kidding. No, please go and get help from your therapist. Um, Someone who's a trained professional. Please do not be healing yourselves uh, through (laughs) social media. Through your relationships. Like, (laughs) oh, also, oh my gosh. Okay, so I don't, this wouldn't necessarily, it might be a red flag that would come up in conversation. I am not a social media relationship person. Oh. Things I don't need posted about all the time, like what we're doing as a couple. Mm. I just I feel like that's putting on airs and at some point like are we doing this for us or are we doing this to show off yep like what are we I use social media to like stay in contact and like give cutesy little updates and I get like that is partly relationship but like I personally don't necessarily I don't know I'm just not gonna be in your social media all the time like I yeah. just I, mean, I need you to put the phone down sometimes and we are most of the time and we're present together, not like present. And then our friends on Instagram are also present with us. Like I just, it's not me. I'm not that person by myself. Yeah. Much less in a, like, I, ugh, I don't know if I have the capacity to be that person. Mm. Um, also our business ain't everybody business. Yes. And it's, it's like not those- like, it's not to be overly secretive. It's just like, 
why does everyone need to know everything? I d- I'm not the president. I did not sign up for this public lifestyle yet. <laughs> if you would like to sign an NDA, we can do that. Like, or if we want to like write up a contract about what things we are willing to disclose, like have your lawyer reach out to my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's like when, I mean, low-key I'd be getting into these people's relationships because they post about it so often, right? So then when they break up, then I feel like the FBI and the CIA trying to figure out why y'all broke up because I'm like, hold on, you can't just make us privy to your relationship and now all of a sudden you don't want us to be privy to your breakup. (laughs) Rights revoked? Like, what is this? I'm sorry, who am I going with in the custody battle? Like, (laughs) (laughs) Who's getting blocked? And so it's one of those, like, you know, I think that as I've grown, gotten older, I've definitely stopped posting as much, but Isaac has never been a poster. And I remember it used to be like a really big point of contention in terms of like, do you even love me? Like you have no public display of emotion for me. And now as an adult, I'm like, thank God, because, you know, there's certain things that don't need to be out there in the universe. There's certain things that do not need to be shared on the World Wide Web. So Shout out to Bay, you doing the thing. Thank you for not posting us, even though, you know, do people know I exist? Yes, they do, because I'm all over your feed. And I'm like the only pictures on his feed, too, when he does post (laughs) once a year. Um, So that's enough security for me as a as a semi healed. Now I'm I'm still I'm still unhealed as I as an unhealed individual. (laughs) Okay, so I feel like we kind of touched on this a little bit. But, you know, at the end of the show, they always end up I mean, if they want to continue the relationship, we'll be married within, you know, I think it's like a six to eight weeks. So that's about two months of knowing someone. What are the like important questions that you need to get out there to know if you are ready to marry them? I mean, again, I'm not even sure I'm ready to marry any person ever. That's true. That's true. So there's that. Um but, A, I will say, like, on this season in particular, and I don't know if they just, like, don't display it because of, like, a rating reason, but, like, it definitely seemed like people in the pods were having, like, the sex conversations. It felt like it was more. happening a lot, right? Like, mm-hmm. there was, like, an entire episode that I felt like half the episode was dedicated to that. But, I like, for a reason. That's a massive part of... Like that's I don't, not massive. Like that's a it can be for some people. No, I would I say that that is like a big part for a lot for of some people. people it's a massive like and so to be with someone who like is not interested in the same things or doesn't have the same drive as you like because there were some people on the show talking about ooh five times a day and I was like do you y'all have don't a got job? a job. Like, <laughs> And you must be some some kind of like work from home. You must have some teleworking privileges because all y'all got time to do it five times a day. Maybe I'm telling on my I'm telling on myself here, but all I know is I got time for that. The time, like it's just even if I had the time, like <laughs> there's so many other things I could be doing in that time. <laughs> there are other ways that we can get to know each other, like. <laughs> But that was, and again, I don't know if they cut it from season one or if people just weren't having those conversations in season one. And then they um, get into it and are unhappy. And realize that, like, that was really incompatible. Um, But I think that's a real thing, too. And that would be, that has the potential to be a breaker, for sure. Um, I forgot, what was the crux of, oh, things, how would I know if I was ready for marriage? Mm. Or at mm-hmm. least like a long term partnership. Mm-hmm. Um, I think another thing that they ran into is like the maintenance of like a physical space. Um, uh, I don't think you've caught to that part of the season, but even in season one, you know, like the dichotomy of like a clean versus a messy person, oh, or apartments girl, versus houses, uh, or like what is the girl's name that ended up with Barrett? Emily, no. Erica. No, nope. Karen, start, Susan. With, you know who I'm talking about, though, right? Old girl <laughs> that came in and was like, just gosh, she was a mess. And then a kept trying to fight, mess. and then kept trying to like fight Jessica. <laughs> like, <laughs> did Jessica deserve to catch these hands? Yes, but <laughs> we didn't have to physically threaten her every time we saw her. Like, Amber. Amber. 
mm-hmm. messy. She was messy mm-hmm. in all senses of the word. Yeah, I think that's a real thing because you are very tidy. Mm-hmm. And I, there's a certain level of mess that I will tolerate. And then there's a certain level of mess where I'm like, no, I just feel sick all of the time and I can't, I cannot. Like, there's a difference between mess and dirty. Like, yeah. You can be dirty. And mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's real. <clears throat> so, like, those are things. Also, again, like the cat, dog, or no pet kind of person, that was a thing that they that people were reconciling. Of like, oh, I have a dog, I have a cat, or I have nothing, or I have, or I don't want anything, or I do, or like, will they get along? At this time, I'm bringing nothing into a relationship, and like, honestly, I have fish. I do have fish. I will say, like, if someone else had a cat or a dog, like, I think I'd probably be fine. Yeah, but that would de- like things I'm not about to do. Take the dog out. Because I'm not going to pick up after the dog. Because that's why I don't have a dog now. I was like, it's also like a the way that people interact with their pets, right? Some people are like only outdoor dog pets versus like mm-hmm. indoor dog. Like the dog is allowed on the couch. The dog is allowed on the bed. The dog, like the cat is allowed on the kitchen counters. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> Places that animals are not allowed in my, in my space. Uh, the bed is definitely, it's a no-go. An outdoor animal, I don't, would not be allowed on any surface at all. Yeah. And then also like the kitchen is a, a, just a, no, no, I might actually install like the toddler doors. Like, no, it just is unsanitary. So yes, the maintenance of a living space is also one of those ones because yes, I'm definitely on the like clean, tidy side of things mm. and can only tolerate I know I had roommates that were on the other side of it and I know where my limits are and they're not very low (laughs) I don't tolerate mess for very long so as we wrap up this episode I feel like this has been a little like we've gotten to see a little bit more into Chris's mind you know we're getting to see like things that he's interested in maybe things that are certain non-negotiables unhealed people (laughs) Okay, so as we wrap up this episode, we're going to rapid fire some of these like end of questions, like burning questions that we have for Chris. Okay, so first question, and you kind of briefly touched on it. What is your number one non-negotiable? My number one non-negotiable is, I really think it's the possessiveness. Mm. I I just, I I don't think I could, I, I couldn't, I could not. Again, communication is healthy possessiveness is not mm, minus smokers <laughs> that's really high up there i will say it's not my number one but uh, it is and i do mean like smokers of any of the things so yeah. like of tobacco or marijuana Laganja. i it it because they're both such pungent odors and you don't like do well them. with smells yeah also, they just get everywhere. Like, it's in your clothes, it's in your furniture, it's in your... Yeah. Okay. Next. Now, you've made it past the pods. You're on vacation. What is your go-to outfit, friend? Really short, because uh, it's the one... They're at the vacation in Cancun. So, yep. like, the short swim shorts, I'm oh, very, yep. like... You know, I tried them one time when I went to Miami, and I was like, actually, I really like these. So, I have adapted the swim... Okay, what color? All the or colors. Print? But... I was like, it'd probably be, hmm. The ones that I had the first time were like a really bright pink, mm, like cute. super bright pink. But honestly, any bright color would be almost neon sometimes, like yep. bright colors, fun colors. Okay, then what is your ideal date while you're on this vacation? Because, you know, they kind of have like those, like, they kind of go on like romantic dates, right? Mm-hmm. Honestly, anything with good food. Ah. It's going to be the good food. Also, we're on the beach. In Cancun. So, like, let's do a water activity. The yeah. jet ski. I don't know if they're allowed to for, like, waiver liability, liability waivers liability. For, <laughs> on the show. But, like, you know, not being on the show, like, we're right here. Let's, that's, like, let's you know, thing. the adventurous part. You know, let's let's jet ski. Let's parasail. Para- uh, yep, yep, yep. Parasailing. Yeah, that one. Paragliding. That's on the water. No, Paragl- sailing. No, paragliding is, like, when you, like. Go in the one with the boat is the draw- boat and it's pulling you. Yeah, I hope it's not like on the fail videos where I had to get like drunk across the sand. <laughs> <laughs> that 
but be, who knows? That would be a worthwhile. It'd be traumatizing. That's what that would be. So I don't know something food based forever and always, and then something just fun out there, adventurous. Yeah. Um, there was a time on this season where they went on an adventure as one of their dates. I won't yeah. spoil it for you because I don't think you've seen it. No. Um, but it was it was just like thoughtful, out of the box, really cool. That's cool. Okay, so. You know, they always say that when you're in a relationship, you can really get to know someone. Like, before you started living together, you can really get to know someone based on how they travel, right? So, like, Isaac has seen that I'm a very anxious traveler, and I'm one of those people, like, got to be at the airport really early, like, got to be checked in, like, has to be on the opposite side. Like, I'm a very high, strong traveler. And once I get on the plane, I'm very chill, but getting to there... I think he's finally learned, like, oh, she not playing about this. Like, no, I'm not. Like, I, you know, have all these different things. What are, I guess, what are things that a partner could do that would make you be like, mm, we cannot travel together anymore? <laughs> I do not like being late. And, you know, five minutes every now and then is one thing. But, like, when you're that person that is, like, serially, chronically, massively late, like, 30 plus minutes to every function ever... Mm -mm. that's not for me i that'll be the thing i do not operate that way you better figure it out because if it said four at the latest i'll be there at 4 15 yeah and sometimes most of the time you're there at 3 55 honestly honestly (laughs) and if i'm even if i'm not like walking in i'm at least in the area or there like at the parking lot yeah. something so nah you're not gonna catch me at no 4 30 5 o'clock and the function said four Okay, so lateness. Okay, so now we've moved past the vacation. You and Bay have, you guys are living life. Uh, you're about to move into the condos together. So what are things that a person would have to know about you to live with you? Oh, I guess, I think- oh, wait, sorry, 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 sorry. Before we get there, mm-hmm. when do you tell a person you're vegetarian? Is that part of your elevator speech or does it like come up not like, how does that come up? I think it'd be a very rare circumstance for someone where it would be a deal breaker. Uh, I could imagine it could be for some people. It's not necessarily for me. Like, Mm -hmm. you and I go out to places as not in 100% agreement on that identity. Like, you eat meat and I do not. And we still go out to places and do stuff and, like, live lives and cook food and, like, have cooked dishes at the same time for one another and been okay with it. So, like, I don't think it would be... Uh, make or break. I think it would probably show up in the Cancun vacation part. Only because, like, logistically, like, I'm going to be ordering non-meat food. Yeah. So I'm sure it's going to, like, someone else is like, oh, I'm going to have the steak tartare. And I'm like, great, I'll have the, like, the whatever. Guacamole. The guacamole. Like, they'll be like, what? And then it'll, it'll probably come up at that point. Um, But honestly... Cheese enchilada. <laughs> If that was a deal breaker, like, it just wasn't meant to be anyway. Yeah. That's true, though. I really think so. Because it's not for me, but it would... It is for other people, I guess. And that's the thing, too, right? Is because it's, like, a very... It's not like I'm asking you to change your lifestyles. Because I feel like there are some, you know, vegetarian and vegans out there who are very, like, my partner has to be a vegetarian or vegan, you know? And it's, like, because we have the same belief and lifestyles. Whereas yours, I feel like... It's more of a preference. Like, you just never really liked red meat where, you know, was a very chicken eater and was like, eh, I think I could cut it out. You know, so while it does lie in some belief system, it's not like your only belief system. Like, these things have faces and we should not eat it. <laughs> um, so I think that's where a lot of it lies is like, would your partner be okay with kind of accepting that? I think that, you know, you could find someone who would be very open to that lifestyle. Okay. So now moving back to condos. Okay. So now we're in the condos. What are things that a person needs to know about you to live with you? I mean, besides the clean thing, you kind of do your dishes in a certain way too. I will not, I will not lie. (laughs) We've we've done dishes together and you're like, why are you doing them like that? And I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) You have like a three sink system. It's like very efficient. It's the most efficient thing I've ever seen. Don't get me wrong. But the first time I did dishes at your house, I was like, why are there so many? options for because you have the washing sink and then the rinsing sink and then the drying rack like i it just is what it is i also didn't trust the dishwasher in my place for like the first three months like i just refused to use it for like three months i was just like i don't trust it i don't think it's working (laughs) 
There was no evidence behind this rationale. I just <laughs> wouldn't do it. I guess I would say like over like I have a I have a cleaning like system for all things. Like it's definitely not just dishes. Like I'm just really intense and meticulous about cleaning all the things in general. I'm not as clean as meticulous. I'm sorry, I'm not as meticulous as my mom is about things. Really? But oh yeah, she is. It's like, like your mom's like like more than you are. I would think like mm-hmm. I think you're pretty intense. I didn't know that there oh, was no. a higher intensity level. Yeah, my mom is more intense than I am. See, so you gotta, so you gotta know if you're getting into this relationship. Chris has the different sprays for everything. Oh, you, you're cleaning glass. Oh no, we're not putting all-purpose cleaner on that. That is Windexer. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like all the different things. Which, yes, please use glass cleaner on glass. Because <laughs> I was like, uh, what? Uh, and then I have a kitchen cleaner, and then there's a bathroom cleaner. Like, no, you have different yeah. cleaners for different. Rooms and spaces. Everything has its certain plate, you know, its certain cleaner and tool and all those different things. Okay, so last mm-hmm. question as part of our rapid fire question for your dating life. Are you ready to get out there? It's 2022. I think so. Again, that's like the theory behind it. But now, Emma, it's time for our real rapid fire question. Well, since you have been answering, asking all the questions, you just want to go ahead and ask the last question and then I'll sure. end with the last laugh. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Speaking of these evil ha ha ha's, who is your favorite villain? Haven't Disney? we answered this question already? Have we? Yeah, because it was Ursula. I was like, you always say Ursula. It's always Ursula. She's just really funny. She was really not like her plight was actually just kind of rude, but <laughs> like I'm a steal yo man with your voice, like with your voice, like the disrespect. Was, like this is like ultimate petty queen. That's who she was. Like she was like petty, but also like to get back at she, Triton. Like yeah, I was like she was like petty to get back at the dad. Like the kids had nothing to do with this, Ursula. You did not have to go for Ariel. Like. Also, did you have to turn her into a human underwater at the bottom of the ocean <laughs> and make her have to swim all the way to the top by herself? I mean, she did say she wanted legs, so. <laughs> <laughs> you set her up immediately to fail. Immediately. <laughs> and then when she did not die, you were like, mm. <laughs> I'm just saying, so set up. Who's your favorite villain? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think. I don't even know what, what did I say in the past? Um, I think my favorite villain is Yzma. <laughs> she yeah. was from Emperor's New Groove because she is definitely the more capable ruler, you know? And she mm-hmm. like, what's his name? Uh, Cusco. Cusco did not deserve to be king. At <laughs> all. Emperor. Like that was mm-hmm. definitely, that was just nepotism. That was just hierarchy. You know, Yzma, You just got it because you were born, were born into born it. That was king. it. You know, he was oh not nice until he turned into the llama. Like, that's that was it. But he Also, because who doesn't enjoy the part where she's like, first, I'll turn him into a cockroach, and then I'll put him in a box, and then I'll put that box in another box, and then I'll mail that box to myself, and when it arrives, I'll smash it with a hammer! <laughs> and so, like, and so, like, Yzma, you couldn't just turn him into a cockroach and then, like, step on him. <laughs> No, she had a whole plan. And then also, you know, behind every strong woman is a dumb man. And so you had Kronk speaking chipmunk or squirrel. (laughs) Just living his best life. You know, was like, was the ultimate, like, okay, whatever you need, ma'am. Like, I got you. Oh, you want to be carried? Okay, I'm strong. I can do that. Was out here, you know, sleeping with his little tent while Yzma was in her. (laughs) So, oh, you wanted me to hit him. In the head. Oh, I thought you said it was time for dessert. <laughs> Crunk, what? Crunk needed some differentiation, okay? He needed some <laughs> scaffolding, and Isma did not give that. So I think there were some there were some missteps on both sides. That was a good one. <laughs> All right, so my question is, what is something that drains your energy really fast? People. <laughs> um no it's like it's a very real thing i didn't realize how much of an introvert what i was until i moved here and um had to be social in a co- in a context of like being social without isaac there's definitely some people that i hang out with here that i'm like oh my god like i feel so good like that was like such a good hangout and there's some people where i'm just like 
it's like getting to know people again and like being friends with people again where I'm kind of like <laughs> rolling my eyes half the time. I'm like, is this, is this done? Are we done yet? Is this interaction done? Um, so definitely there's certain people and I can't even say like what it is that will turn me off and like be like, I can't, I can't hang out with this person again other than like my soul and energy just don't vibe. Does that make sense? Mm hmm. What drains your soul? Interacting with strangers, like especially prolonged interactions with strangers. So like after things like those hiring fairs or like meet your meet the teacher nights, like something where essentially I'm just like serially meeting new people and like always have to be on. Oh, it is. Oh, my God. That's good. I have to like supercharge for the next day or two because I whew, those take it out of me so you we're definitely not putting you in any speed dating you know what I think it is too it's like my one thing that like drains me really quickly is when I meet someone I wasn't expecting to meet them does that make sense so like I have a friend I have a friend out here who's like she's just very social and she's like oh my gosh we're gonna go meet this other person and I'm just like wait my body like was barely ready to like come out and socialize with you and now you want me to socialize with strangers who I like mm have no intention of seeing again like I cannot my body doesn't operate like that I cannot just like be social all of a sudden like Isaac is a very social person and he's good at that so I think that's kind of where like I'm missing that buffer now because he can make conversation with anyone like about anything he'll find a point of you know interest and then just like go for it and for me I'm like I can't small talk anymore I'm not a very good small talker and I'm speaking from personal experience because this happened to me last week. And I was like, what the F is happening? <laughs> Things I was not ready for this. <laughs> Things I can mm-hmm. talk about at length. This. <laughs> oh, those like serial strange interactions. Oh, so yeah, just imagine like unexpected interactions, but like serially. That's I mean, granted, as a job fair, you sign up for it. Like, you know what you're about to do or meet yeah. the teacher. Like, you you know it's about to happen. It's about to be nothing but strangers, but... Parent-teacher like conferences, that. ooh, those, like, drain me. And it's a whole day thing. Oh, my gosh. Because sometimes that's just delivering strings of bad news. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny because my school gives, like, a... They give kind of, like, a template of, like, how you should... <laughs> how you should deliver the news. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but if your kid is bad as hell, like, I don't know how to make that better. Like, is a very rambunctious and has very vibrant energy. Okay, now I'm about to tell you. (laughs) This is real vibrant. (laughs) You really be vibrating all over this room, just really everywhere. I want to take that energy and like funnel it. Funnel it into like an energy drink and give it to myself every morning. <laughs> you know, so he's chill and I'm a little bit more wired. But <laughs> in any case, Emma, where can people find the podcast? You can find our podcast on Instagram and Twitter at the Tea with Crema. You can also find this on YouTube. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. You can stream us on any of your podcast streaming apps. And if you'd like to buy us a cup of tea, you can Venmo us at the Tea with Crema. We hope to see you next time. Bye.